filled, keeping filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I said earlier that Satan's done a great job. Up until about the 20th or the late 1890s, uh, turn of the century, the church had no problem with the concept of baptism with the Holy Spirit. That was just an accepted thing. It's clearly in Scripture. It's clearly there. It's clearly commanded. It's clearly indicated. And the church didn't have a problem with it. The problem came when the church didn't follow the rules, the guidelines. And so from 1903 or 2, when the denomination started, until 1929, the denomination I was raised in, the denomination that my uncle was hired to write the official biography of the founder, the founder whom my grandmother played the piano and her mother played the piano for, the Nazarene Church, was called the Pentecostal Church of the Nazarene. Now, see, the reality is everybody agreed it until things got out of hand. The Bible's real clear on how we're to be in submission to the Spirit. I want us to be a church that is spirit-filled, spirit-led, keeping being filled, and directed by the guidelines in the Bible on how we're to operate. I have no problem with emotionalism. God's got emotion. God laughs. God cries. There's nothing wrong with that. But I want us as a church to understand what Scripture says about the Holy Spirit and about the Holy Spirit in filling and staying, being filled, refilled with the Holy Spirit. We have ideas how we were, when I, when I first got saved, um, I got saved, uh, rededicated my life. I went to the pastor that I, of the denomination I was raised with because they were telling me, you've got to be filled with baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going, hey. So he takes me to uh, 1 Corinthians. He goes, hey, it says right there that, 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 that tongues will cease. I, want, I don't want to get off on that. And I said, but that's a comma. That's not the end of the sentence. It says knowledge will cease. So we'll hold that for now. That's, I'm getting way ahead of myself. I want to talk about what Jesus said concerning receive ye the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1, 4, 5, and 8, it says, And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the end of the earth. Well, praise God. See, the problem is we need to, be, we need to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every redeemed believer in Jesus Christ, our Savior, needs to know why we need to be and keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? To be filled initially, that is to receive the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, is not, let me hear, hear me say this, it's not automatic. Being filled, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not an automatic condition to which Christians succumb by default. Any more than when we do water baptism at the end of service is sometimes automatic. No. In each case, a decisive commitment must be made. You need to decide, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Jesus said, be I'm going to be baptized. We have, that's why we have baptismal classes. It's a commitment. You have to make a decision. Well, it'll just happen. No, it won't just happen. I'll walk outside and it'll, a cloud will come over me and pour over me. And that'll be my water baptism. No, you need to make a decision that you're going to follow the guidelines that God has put for us. By the way, God never tells us to do anything that isn't good for us. Water baptism has a ton of wonderful, wonderful things that God does for us. And I don't want us to be jumping through hoops. I believe God wants knowledgeable believers. I believe he wants to know why we're doing what we're doing. I believe that he lays it out for us. This is the reason we're doing what we're doing. I want us to lead us into a deep and a, a stained hunger for the living fullness of the Holy Spirit in these next four weeks. I want to look at Jesus' words and listen to his voice, listen to his heart as he explains the purpose of the Holy Spirit being sent, i.e. coming to us, being poured out upon us, and abiding 
within us. In the last week, in fact, John 14 to 17 is literally the Last Supper. This, this is the, and, and Jesus, okay, Jesus knows what's coming up. Disciples don't. They're still looking for a mighty army to kick tail and take names of Romans. Jesus is reinforcing his teachings. He's coming back and saying, hey, I want you to remember what I've been telling you and living before you. I want you to see what happens. Jesus was infilled, he was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? So, point one. The Holy Spirit is sent as a resource to us. Look at Jesus' words. John 14, 15 to 18. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, paraclete, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you, will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. The Holy Spirit is one coming to abide with us forever. The Holy Spirit comes alongside to assist. He will give you another helper that will abide with you forever. You're going to get another helper. Um, how about if I do this in the weeks to come? On my notes, I broke everything down. I put A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. I may have Kathy just, you don't want to read my notes because they're too ugly to see. With all the scritching, but I may have Kathy clean some of them up for you. Because you can see where I'm going. Because I want you to understand, I want you to be able to mark in your Bible. This is what God is saying. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Three times we're going to see that word, spirit, the, the phrase Spirit of Truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he deals with you and will, will. Do not leave Jerusalem until you've been infilled, empowered with the Holy Spirit, with you. And I will not leave you. So the first thing is that, that the Holy Spirit abides with us, for he comes along to assist us. He's inside us to enable us. He will dwells with you and will be in you. And he's the one that reassures us that we're never alone. I will never leave you orphans. Amen? You're never alone when you have the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life. Ever. Second, the Holy Spirit is sent as a teacher for us. John 25 and 26. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Bring you to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. First of all, he's a teacher for us. The Father has sent him in Jesus' name. He will teach you all things. When you're reading the Bible and you're going, Lord, help me, direct my reading. You know the Holy Spirit will do that? He'll do that. Don't play Bible roulette. We all, we all understand what that is. Lord, I need an answer. I need an answer. Open your Bible and let it drop. And Judas went out and hung himself. Well, that can't be the right one. Let me try that again. Let's try this again. Go therefore and do likewise. No, no, that can't. <laughs> I don't think Bible roulette is where God wants us. He wants us people that know the word that are infilled and continually being filled by the Holy Spirit. And he will direct us. Look what it says. He will teach us all things. Lord, show me. That's why daily devotions, that's why reading the word is so imperative. 
so that you know the word. You're not just hearing somebody on the radio or someone on TV or some fat guy up front talking, but you're actually reading it so the Holy Spirit can direct you. He will teach you all things. And two, as a teacher, he's going to bring you to remembrance all things that I've said to you. All the things that God has done in your life. All the times that, that God has spoken into your life. All the times, all those things that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. By the way, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, never deviates from the Word of God, the Bible. He's come to instruct us and to remind us of essential things. Three, the Holy Spirit is sent as a witness through, to witness through us. John 15, but when the Holy Spirit comes, the Helper, yeah. whom I shall send to you from the Father, again, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. He is sent to witness through us. We can witness the things that God has said. I can guarantee you, I can tell you that God is able to raise the dead. I've seen the dead, I've held them in my hands, and God has brought life back to them. I've seen, I, I've seen uh, cancer healed by the power of God. I have new jobs come out of nowhere. We didn't have a lot of money as pastors, and when the kids needed some of the baseball gloves or this or that, we would pray, Lord, this is what we need. We'd be very specific. Be specific in your prayers. Let the Lord know what you want. He knows what you want. Make it specific. Specific. Don't make it the ocean. But we do that a lot. We pray these prayers around the globe. If you, you have not because you ask not. He has sent a witness as a witness through us. I can testify. I can pray with confidence for the sick. I can pray for with confidence that God meets our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I can, because I've experienced all of that. Just because you haven't experienced it, I bet you know somebody who has. From when the helper comes, whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. He is one personally sent from the Father, he comes to testify, to bring confirming evidence. If you don't pray for the sick, then how do you know that God heals? And I, I, this needs full disclosure. I prayed for the sick, and they got well. I prayed for the sick, and they died. That's God's business. It's my business to, believe, to pray in faith, believing that he can. It's not my business to determine. It's my business to be obedient to the commands of God, to pray for the sick, to anoint them with oil, to call for the elders and anoint them. That's our business, to testify, to bring confirming evidence, to enable our witness, because we know him. We've experienced him in our lives and our hearts. Number four, John 16, 7 to 11. He is, the Holy Spirit is sent as a witness to go before us. This is, this is where that song really confirmed. John 16, 7 to 11, number 4. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. If I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. That's an interesting thing because it says convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sins because they do not believe me. And he's, why is he going to convict the world of, of, of righteousness? The word is convince. Unless the Holy Spirit showed you your sin, unless you knew you were lost, you wouldn't be lost. You wouldn't know it. You need to be careful about how we treat people in the world who do not know God, do not know the ways of God, and are not acquainted with the Holy Spirit. They have no moral compass. The Holy Spirit comes to convict of sin. That doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit can't convict an unbeliever, because he does. 
But there are people who have seared their conscience, the word says. So let's just pray for them and let the Holy Spirit do what he's going to do. Why do so many people, and, and, and some of us, fill that void in our life with so many other things rather than the Holy Spirit? He's come to convict us, persuade us that we need him. He will convict, convince, reprove, show us our sin. And of righteousness. He'll show us how to be righteous. He's there to convince of sin. Allowing people to understand the shallowness of their unbelief and self-determination. I can do it my own way. No, no, you can't. Well, you can, but you're going to reap the harvest. And it's not going to be good. He's there to persuade us of righteousness. To allow us to know, to let the unsaved, to let the person know that how absolutely unmatchable, how peerless his power and presence and love is to our lives. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin. Because I go to the Father and you see me no more. He's there to convict, convince of judgment. He's there to show people the absolute bankruptcy of trying to do it on their own without him. And tell you it's a bankrupt life, a frustrating life, when you try to live this life with all the turmoil in it and sin abounds, grace much more abounds. We need Jesus Christ and we need the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit here is to convince us and show us of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Holy Spirit shows the sinner the hole their lives are in and Jesus can only get them out. Amen? And you often heard that if you find yourself in a hole, quit digging. We need to be a people who understand if we're trying to fix our problems, we need to go back to the Holy Spirit. We need to repent. It's never sermon. Five. The Holy Spirit is sent as a voice to speak to us. John 16, 13 and 14. However, when He, again, the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you of things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it. The Holy Spirit at three times is called the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit comes as a spirit of prophecy, the Spirit of Truth. He will guide you, directing us through the Word. That's why it's so important when you read the Word. You got a decision, read the Word and pray. Allow the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you how many times I, I, when I've read my devotions or I've been in, in the Word and I'm, all of a sudden pops up, I got a problem, I got this, I got a decision to make, I got a, something to happen, and the Holy Spirit will just illuminate. It's called Rhema. It sort of jumps off the page. Whoa, there's my answer. I probably read that verse a hundred times before, but now it became my answer. Now He showed me in His Word. Directing us through the Word, He'll guide you it says, he will guide you into all truth. And as a spirit of revelation, he'll prompt us concerning the future. Ooh. Don't do that. He's going to affirm and confirm to us that it's in his hand. He's going to let us know. I will tell you things to come. That's what Jesus said. Jesus says the Holy Spirit will identify and tell us. That's what is right there. He will tell us things to come. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that God wants to teach the church how to listen so we can be prepared. And we can function as he directs. And finally, as the spirit of glory, he'll glorify Jesus by displaying his works through us. This is that last few hours. And he wants to talk again. He's talked about the Holy Spirit a whole bunch of other times. Let's talk again. He's coming. I got to go. Don't be upset. I'm going to be I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be killed and laid in the ground and then I'm coming back. But the reality is I'm coming back. 
the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one. They're not three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm coming back. How many times do we see Jesus say, I'm coming back? In the light of what Jesus has made clear, it's tender, it's pointed, it's authoritative. This is our first sermon on the introduction to the Holy Spirit and his ministry to and through us. The Bible is very clear. If you want to live a victorious... And, and by the way, let, let's get all that out. That, let's just bring it up to the surface. You aren't going to grow in Jesus Christ without problems. Are you? No. If somebody comes to you and say, well, just try Jesus and all your problems will go away. Shut the door on their face. Try, we don't, Jesus is not the latest candy bar. Stretch out your hands. Father, we thank you for these lives that are here this morning. They're making that next step. They've already committed to you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, we thank you that they're taking that next step to be baptized in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you for them. We thank you that this is a moment of life. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that any that, that want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even if they're being baptized in water, let that experience, let them come expecting. But, Lord, I thank you for the decisions that they've made. I thank you for the moment that will always be remembered. In Jesus' name. Come on. Oh. Oh, it's fine. Well, I will say this. You're lucky that I found the extension cord. Because I spent over an hour looking for the extension cord, or else this thing would have been ice cold. <laughs> but you're very fortunate. I baptized 20 people on Christmas mor- I mean, on Easter morning. We had to walk out about 15 feet on the lake, and then they took picks and shovels and broke through the ice. <laughs> and then I got in, and we baptized 20 people. And everybody was joyous, big bonfire on the beach. Come and join us, Pastor. I can't move. <laughs> and I literally couldn't move. A couple of men had to come out and grab me under the armpit, my let my... Yeah, hyperthermia affects your body. And so they dumped me in the fire. Well, close to the fire. <laughs> so you have a nice, warm baptism. Your name? Sarah. Got a last name? <laughs> Sarah Richmond. What? Sarah Richmond. Sarah Richmond. Um, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Are you going to live for him all the days of your life? Yes. Would you like to be baptized? Okay. Hannah, put your hand behind me. Don't, don't go down yet. I'm going to lose you. Okay. Sarah Richmond, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? Okay. brother no oh, it probably needs it <laughs> your name uh, Brendan tell them Brendan Richmond Brandon Richmond no, Brendan Brendan what's your last name that same as your sister, huh? <laughs> Turn around here. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Brent? Yeah. Are you going to serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Would you like to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as Jesus instructed? Yes. Okay, cross them up. Oh, you don't have to hold it long. <laughs> as you're holding your... Do you know that a guy a couple of weeks ago held his breath for 18 minutes? How long can you do it for? <laughs> 
Brendan and Richmond. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anna. <laughs> Good job, Brendan. Carl. Yeah. It's nice. Your name? Judith. Enriquez. Judith? Judith. What's the last name? Enriquez. Okay, Judith. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. Do you want to live for him all the days of your life? I do. Would you like to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, Judith. Uh, when I say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Judith, somebody else shouts about last name. Come on, relatives, help me out here. <laughs> Thank you. What? Enrique? Enrique. Enrique. Oh, I can. Enrique? Yes. <laughs> Somebody give me a dictionary. <laughs> Judith Enrique. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dakota Curtis, man, you're tall. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. Are you going to live for your life? I am. Amen. Would you like to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? I would. Dakota Curtis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.